Hey, I'm Short, and right now I'm going to do a live view of an article that's been submitted as draft to Sirius Chrome to give you an impression about what our review process is like. Um, today I'm reviewing an article by Ryan Erickson, uh, who submitted his first article to Sirius Chrome. Now, submitting an article to Sirius Chrome, you know, takes courage. Um, you're putting your story out there um, for others to review. It is a, a learning process. Um, so we invite Scrum practitioners to write about their experiences, to share it with us um, so that we can learn from their experiences, but also so that they can learn from the feedback that they receive on the articles. Um, so Ryan Erickson, um, he describes himself um, using from a father of five who's retired military, and he's trying to navigate the real world, as, uh, as he calls it. Um, and he's uh, active in pro project management and agile, evidently scrum. Now, Ryan submitted um, his first article asking uh, for our review. And uh, he submitted it with the title, Am I Really a Scrum Master? Now that's a, that's a playful and inviting title that may draw curiosity from other re readers. Um, I'm sure this has been, this question has been on the mind of many Scrum Masters. Am I really a Scrum Master? Um, you know, he, he opens up with a, a happy, playful uh, photograph. Um, um, and a rights free platform called Unsplash. So uh, if you publish with Medium, we do check if your um, photos and images. Uh, Either they're your own or they are um, open source. Um, now, although this is a great picture um, and, and it may capture the spirit of this article, um, it would, would have been even better if Ryan would have shared his own photograph that would have made it more authentic. So let's start with the first paragraph. The original title of this article was to be are you really a Scrum Master? However, as it progressed and I began editing it, I realized I was also writing about myself. So that's playful. I like it. It's authentic. So he, he's already um, opening up the article with, uh, with a learning that he shares with it rather than making it about the other he makes the article about himself and this is what we're looking for in articles that they are authentic um and that you know the writer shows that they're learning uh, from the experience they're open to learn um, by sharing experiences so that's uh that's a great opener um So, and he's also inviting us to ask ourselves this question. So he opens up with an invitation. Then in the next paragraph, he writes, if you've never doubted your given title within an organization or are one of the many who've grasped what it means to have an imposter syndrome. Um, I think many will recognize this message, the imposter syndrome. Um, I think many of our practitioners are familiar with it, so it doesn't necessarily need a reference. Um, he did make a small uh, formatting error here with the I being slanted, being italic. Um, so I outlined I this in a private note. It's not a real medical condition per se, so just to be clear on that. 
um, and he describes what it means to him and, and what he used as a reference for it. Um, and he courageously shares that he's also been there. So it's authentic. Um, and he, he, he's show, showing a bit of vulnerability here, which I think is a good leadership quality. It's something that, you know, is very good for Scrum Master to have. So let's get aligned, a playful invitation. Um, so he wants to invite us first to get a shared understanding of what it means to be a Scrum Master. Now, um, in our review process, we outlined a couple of the steps uh, that we're looking for in a review. Uh, one that's conformity means, um, it means it must be confirming um, to Scrum, you know, it's we're serious Scrum, so the article has to be about Scrum or play out in Scrum and a Scrum environment. Um, and we also um, review that the content is actually in line with the most recent version of the Scrum Guide, so that we're not confusing terminology or we're um, um, sending out inconsistent messages about what Scrum is, what the accountabilities are, the events, the artifacts, et cetera. Um, so this is something we're checking. Um, we're also checking for if uh, he's sharing his opinion, whether he's sharing advice, his experience and and and, and facts. And if, if, if the reader can really distinguish between them, does he present something as fact that really is just his own subjective opinion? Um, you know, is he speaking from his own experience or does he generalize his experience? So it must be really clear to the reader what that distinction is. So that's something we're looking for. Um, so we're looking for unsupported generalization of assumption universalities. Um, we're also looking for that the article, the author must themselves have professional experience as well, as it's about sharing experiences. Um, we align to see if the author really also, you know, is true to the, the values in Scrum and aligns with the purpose of uh, our community um, to share what works, what doesn't, good practices, um, introducing Scrum to your team, etc. cetera. Um, so we prefer constructive articles. Um, we look for it if there's no commercial uh, intentions there or self-promotion. Um, we we look for if the article is specific to a certain certain topic. So it's not a spaghetti of references or spaghetti of, of, of different subjects and topics. And and we also check if the article truly delivers on the premise of the title. Um, quality is tricky because most Scrum practitioners aren't necessarily experienced writers. Um, we have an international community that means that. Um, you know, the majority of our members are not proficient in English. It's not, it's not their native language. Um, but there is value to the stories that they're sharing, and the experiences that they they have. So for us, it's that's the trade of we're making. We're looking, we, we can help improve quality and as an editorial. Um, we're really looking to see if the story has merit, if, um, if there's value to the experience being shared with other practitioners. Um, you know, we had like over, I think 2000 articles already published for series Scrum, you know, ranging from various different subjects. So we are looking for if there's something unique in a specific article, if it's not just, um, uh, rehashing things we've already covered, um, or if it's just a summary of, of or references to, to material already out there. We, we do look for unique contributions. Um, of course, the author, when we go through this review process, must be open um, to our feedback and incorporating that feedback. Um, we, in our review, clearly distinguish, you know, what we have to comply with, it, uh, th that those are these uh, guidelines, and what are our own opinions and suggestions as a, as a reviewer, um, which, uh, which are optional. Um, but they have to comply with these 10 or 11 rules. Um, 
although we look for uh, articles you know that have a catchy headline it must be a true it, it must not be uh, it must not be a trojan horse so to speak it must not mislead the reader uh, the article must really be about what the headline um, what the headline reads um, and the rest of the things are just the general steps we need to do to get it published with Sirius Club. So that's what we're looking for. Um, now in this, uh, this paragraph, he says, per our scrum Bible of sorts, the scrum guide. Now, of course, that's, uh, you know, written there tongue in cheek. It's, uh, um, it's equating Bible to scrum guide, playing into maybe the, sent the, the, the negative sentiment uh, of a uh, scrum equating to a religion or a cult or having ceremonies and rituals. Um, but that really applies negative framing. Um, invites us to the metaphorical realm of religion by mischaracterizing uh, the scrum guide as a Bible. It's, it's provocative, but it does not help our practitioners. It could be considered disrespectful to both scrum uh, and those who are religious. So um, we encourage uh, the author not to include uh, um, such characterizations, uh, even though it's playful. Um, and then he continues um, about the way the Scrum Master is defined, referencing the definition of the Scrum Master. So one thing we do we can assume is that our audience is already familiar with basic concepts of Scrum. Um, so there's no need to uh, restate uh, the definitions of um, accountabilities and elements in Scrum. In this case, however, he does want to talk about Scrum Master accountability, so he makes his reference, so that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, and he also explains that he, he finds this um, bullet point in the, in the Scrum Guide, one of the most important bullet points. So we can learn a little bit more about, um, you know, the his evaluation of uh, the content in the Scrum Guide. Um, so then he provides his personal take. So he clearly outlines his own that his own personal take, right? So that that you know his own personal take can be different to what maybe the Scrum Guide explicitly writes, and he makes that clear that it's his personal take. So, but he, he he writes that they are in a large sense a project manager. So of course that's his own uh, opinion, uh, responsible for overseeing a cross-functional team uh, and safeguarding the use of agile process during progression of tasks and projects, software or otherwise. Um, now this is uh, tricky because of course it's his own personal take and he makes that explicit, but he does communicate something that does you know it does not confirm uh, with the Scrum Guide. Um, and he doesn't he doesn't explain why his own personal take is different to what the Scrum Guide reads. So um, he also uses the acronym uh, S uh, M, uh, which it could be confusing to the readers. Um, and so as for the characterization, his own personal characterization, the project manager, well, that's you know, a Scrum Master does not manage projects, so that characterization is not correct. Um, he's also, like the Scrum Master, also not responsible for overseeing cross-functional teams. The Scrum Master is not hierarchical. Um, and he does coach, this, of course, uh, the, the Scrum team in, in, in working cross-functionally and being a cross-functional team. Um, and about the safeguarding and use of Agile processes. Well, although the Scrum Master helps the team uh, understanding and practicing Scrum, um, you know, Scrum team is a self-managing team. They, they internally decide um, how they manage their work and, and, and they self-manage their processes uh, within the framework of Scrum. And of course, there's the Scrum process itself that the Scrum Master uh, is accountable for. Um, but does that extend beyond prescribing or safeguarding uses of other Agile processes, that that's not the case for the Scrum Master. Uh, moreover, the Scrum Master um, does not track the progression of tasks and project software or manage it in any way. Um, the Scrum Master does not do 
those things. Um, that's the developers themselves that do that because they're the ones doing the work. So that has to be cleared up. And even though it's his own personal take, it, it's it's um, it falls in the essence of Scrum. Um, and he continues to write, you'll often hear the phrase that the Scrum Master should have to carry the wallet. And we often um, hear about you Scrum Master being portrayed as like a, a water bringer or coffee or tea, um, ser serving coffee or tea or, or anything else that developers may need. Um, and then he continues, that's, that is that they're in a position to help guide, motivate, facilitate team conversation, collaboration, stakeholder acceptance to ensure the tasks move smoothly towards completion. Now, the latest edition um, of the Scrum Guide um, explicitly changed the phrasing of the um, and the characterization of the Scrum Master from being a servant leader to being a true leader. Uh, why was that? Um, well, because this um, conception was going around. The Scrum Master is a true leader. So um, they're not a coffee or tea bringer. Scrum Master does not do anything that the, the team is perfectly capable of doing themselves. That is not honoring their self-management. Um, so that 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 is not explicit here, um, and we don't want to, as serious scrum, we don't want to portray that um, characterization of the scrum master as a as a as, as a serving, uh, carrying the water, so to speak. Um, then he goes into to listing these positions. Um, the stances of the scrum master are indeed to help and guide and uh, encourage and facilitate uh, collaboration and conversations. Um, but then he also mentioned stakeholder acceptance. Now, it's not really explicit what that means. Or, you know, you could say that it implies that the Scrum, the stakeholders must accept the work of the Scrum team, uh, that the work of the Scrum team delivers. At least that's how I read it as a reviewer. Um, that's also not necessarily true in Scrum, because the Scrum team is self-managing. They, they have a definition of done, uh, you know, and... Um, it's, it's not necessarily so that stakeholders are the ones accepting their work. Um, and that's also not uh, characterized as such in the Scrum Guide would find as such. And then the last statement, ensuring that tasks move, smooth, move, smooth, move smoothly towards completion. Um, that's not an accountability of the Scrum Master. Um, that's the developers self-managing their work. Um, and they're accountable for uh, for, for moving their items to uh, to uh, to work together to to get it done according to the definition of done, and turning it into a potentially a releasable increment to deliver value. Um, the scrum master is not part of that, um, and should back out and not involve uh, him or herself in that process. Uh, the Scrum Master is the individual that ensures everyone has a voice, is heard, and is acknowledged. This person is also good at blocking out any distractions or time wasters. But again, it's, it's good to mention that although the, the, the Scrum Master uh, does help cause to remove impediments, um, if the team members can do this themselves, then of course they should do it themselves. Um, they are an agile coach. Um, Indeed, you could say the Scrum Masters coach a uh, Scrum team in um, enhancing its agility. Um, but the Scrum Master is not a function as such. It's a set of accountabilities. Um, they do help their teams to stay focused or at least encourage the team to live by the Scrum value, focusing on the goals of the sprint. Um, this is within tight timelines and deadlines, but Scrum has a cadence, uh, it's sprint, and it has a sprint goal that abides by that cadence. Uh, Scrum Master doesn't necessarily um, instruct teams to focus on, on, on tight timelines and deadlines. It does encourage you maybe to release things um, so that you can learn from it. Um, but there's the cadence of the, the, the sprints already in existence for that. Um, so that has, that that may be a bit redundant or superfluous, and it would have been better if it read uh, focus on their 
you know, goals such as the product goal and spring goal. Um, they'll also work closely with product owners assuring the right products are built without sacrificing quality. And then that's, like, I think, the whole team's accountability because the developers, they're building a product and they're, uh, you know, ensuring quality. All right, so he says, okay, let me get my post, I'm not preaching. So this is, yeah, so he, he did say he wanted to make the article about himself and his own experience, but then he's still externalizing, uh, and, you know, and, and defining Scrum and, and, and you know, um, sharing his understanding of what the accountability of Scrum Master are. Um, but is this me, you, us? So it becomes unclear to the reader now by which, by which definition we should go by, by the official definition of Scrum Guide or by Ryan's own. That, that's already confusing. Um, so is this me, you, or us? So um, it may be that the reader has their own understanding of Scrum Masters, and now we have three understandings. Um, so while the above is a good explanation of what the Scrum Master is supposed to be, well, according to himself, so that's a bit a cheeky, but um, how does it compare with how you and I run our teams? Well, first of all, do we run our teams? That's again, you know, we want teams to run themselves, right? Um, and the true, none of us do it the same way, right? There's no perfect picture of, uh, you know, who, who, what you should be as a scrum master. There is a set of accountabilities, but, you know, you are you. And how you live up to those accountabilities is up to you. Scrum doesn't necessarily prescribe that. Um, you bring in your own experience, you know, and, and Scrum does introduce like, okay, you need to coach, facilitate, train, teach, and lead. So that's a that's part of working with Agile. To be Agile is to be malleable. Metable things tend to bend and move with the flow of life in a sense. True. Um, you know, as we stay focused on our goals, we we have to maneuver around impediments and apply our creativity to solve these complex problems. Then he shares a list um, and asks us to see if they apply to us. So do we protect the team from getting distracted? Or can we coach a team to protect themselves from getting distracted? Can they live up to their own values without getting distracted? That's also something to consider. Uh, do you personally engage with those who are hindering your team's software otherwise uh, efforts? Uh, you've used the words, yeah, you can use it, you know, bring, introduce a terminology, uh, professional terminology, guiding your team in how to practice um, Scrum and, and improve your agility. Um, I think this is a typo. I'm not sure how this this is read. Um, current means. I think it's meant to be meant to read through your current means of measuring effort. And not the best of your team. Hmm. Though your although your current means of measuring effort are not the best for your team, nothing is good enough for your team. I'm not sure what that. Sorry, that wasn't a typo. But thought. Yeah. Though. Though. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can ask yourself, how is effort me measured in Scrum? Should it, and how, who decides? And what is it for? And is that your accountability as a Scrum Master to measuring your efforts? No, I don't think so. Uh, you take the time to explain why the team is doing this versus from the backlog. I think that's mainly, so, you know, it's unclear which backlog, but uh, I'm sure he's assuming the product backlog here. And that's that is the accountability of the product owner. Um, doing that on behalf of the product owner may not be the best way. Um, you have to remind the product owner or proxy. Interesting. Um, that to do this emergent thing, the team can't do that other emergent thing. And it is the case that you have to remind the product owner. Maybe coach the product owner doing this um, if, if if they need your help, but there's no no need to inflict your help. 
here. That's the accountability prompt. Um, but you can coach the product owner in understanding uh, their own accountabilities better uh, according to Scrum. Uh, look for and try different approaches to improve and improve and improve the process. Well, you know, with Scrum Master being specific to the Scrum process, like, um, you know, um, through the Scrum framework itself, but uh, who should be trying this approach to improve and who should look them up? That's the developers themselves and the product owner, of course, when it comes to product ownership approaches. Of course, you as a Scrum Master can, can, uh, can coach them uh, in this, but you shouldn't do anything that they should do themselves or could do themselves. Um, and you're reading this to potentially enhance your life uh, as an always learning Scrum Master. Oh, that's wonderful. It, it, it shows a little bit about his own spirit and what he's looking for. And uh, uh, I really love that. Um, so now he says, if you could pick up even one of those, um, you're a Scrum Master, right? Um, so yeah, I think you meant to say that you've got the, the true spirit needed um, to, to act out your accountabilities as a Scrum Master. Um, he hasn't met a single person who's ever been told you are not a Scrum Master, project manager, et cetera. Um, but then again, he also invites us to think about uh, surrounding ourselves with negative people. Um, Again, if we if we go to the, the, the core principles in Scrum, it's, you know, the Scrum Master, good to kind of emphasize that um, it's it's the team that decides self management. Um, it's you know getting something done every sprint and inspecting and adapting and growing transparency. Um, you know, as you work through the sprint. Um, he briefly met like junior, senior, master. Uh, there is no hierarchy in that sense when it comes to Scrum uh, or in the Scrum team. Uh, so he, he's also inviting us to stop doubting ourselves. Um, read a blog, write one, let's see uh, Ryan doing a good, good learning opportunity. And you can develop your own skills, and move on with your day. So um, overall, I, I think this is a really wonderful article by Ryan, and he does capture the essence um, and the spirit of the Scrum Master uh, really well, that you're looking to learn um, and supporting your team and really being committed to supporting your team in that, um, improving in Scrum. Um, and I think that this review uh, will definitely help Ryan also improve and grow um, and, and make this article even better um, you know, we, we, we all scrum masters are going through this process. So it's, uh, um, it's, 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 it's rewarding. It's of course, getting feedback can be tricky, right? Um, uh, we encourage people to kind of give feedback as a gift, but also to, 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 uh, treat feedback as if it is a gift, uh, you know, it's to help level up. Um, and I hope that Ryan, uh, I trust that I will use this feedback to, to, to level up too. Um, the feedback is shared in the comments here as well. And we share this also on Slack. We have a writing channel in Slack um, where you can submit your drafts um, and then we'll review it. We use icons um, to uh, to indicate the status. So this means I'm, I'm currently looking at his article, reviewing it. Um, just saying hi as it's his first uh, draft. Um, and then uh, in articles, you can see like a one and two. So there's members of our editorial um, ambassador series Scrum. They can, um, uh, you know, uh, submit their uh, approval for publication. And we need two editors to do so. So if you have a one and a two, then the article is ready to be published. Um, we may need to add you as a writer. Um, to Medium, so you can submit to our publication, um, but we will guide you through that process. Um, so thank you uh, for uh, your time in walking uh, through this article with me. Um, hopefully uh, this is interesting to you too, if, if you're writing articles, if you're reviewing articles uh, to understand what we're looking for. Um, my hat's off to Ryan. Uh, Wonderful work and uh, 
we'll take it from there. Thank you so much.